Welcome to Sailing Magic Carpet. In this episode, we explore a shipwreck sunk deep into a shifting sandbar, navigate our way through a busy commercial shipping channel, and give you a tour of one of Europe's biggest dry docks. This is also our second to last video in season one. Don't worry, season two will start very soon. But to mark the occasion, I played this song on the bow of Magic Carpet to say goodbye to the Mediterranean, at least for now. And now, to shake you from the reverie of that lovely little scene, let's turn the camera 180 degrees around and look at things from a different angle. We were just entering a busy industrial bay, which is, incidentally, also where we'll be keeping magic carpet for the winter. The storage here is cheap for a reason. The bay is filled with industrial plants belching fire and smoke into the air, numerous giant cargo ships steaming in and out, and, just to make things interesting, an array of shipwrecks and ever-shifting sandbars. Naturally, we thought we'd throw down the anchor and go check it all out for one last adventure before motoring into the harbor. So we just anchored. I kind of feel like I might get radioactive after jumping into this water. It is so scary. shallow here and it's just the mast sticking up out of the water. So I wanted to come check this out because I had never seen it before but Aladino has actually been here before without me and last time he came he took a shackle that was still on one of the halyards or I don't know what it was attached to. Well I climbed to the top and I took the, the shackle of the spinnaker. <laughs> So, one. so now we've got a big spinnaker shackle on board our boat. We've had it with us all summer. Of this shipwreck. And it's from this boat. Still got the sails on even. Well, yeah. kind of. <laughs> and the one in the mast is a rolling curling sail and it's still in the mast. Yeah, the main sail. Not that I would be interested. Still Shitty. tucked away inside there. I was so excited the first time we saw the shipwreck and we did the same, we anchored and then we swam over and I really expected to see a boat and go diving and look at some interesting stuff and yeah I realized pretty soon that you can walk towards here. I was a bit disappointed. Yeah, because the whole thing's cool. buried. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing is buried. The sandbank and adjacent shipwreck were both a bit bizarre. They seemed endless and barren, sad and neglected, set against a backdrop of gorgeous Mediterranean blue on one side, but belching chimneys on the other. After exploring, we swam back to the boat and motored towards the harbor. <laughs> oh my god, not the whole boat. <laughs> Dive in, Dini. My dad has worked on boats his whole life, and 
he likes to tell this story about a friend of his who was working on board the same tugboat as him and on his time off from the tugboat he enjoyed spending time on his little sailboat and a question commonly asked when people live on sailboats in Canada is well how do you heat your boat and he never really sailed around Canada I don't think he kept his boat down south somewhere and so his favorite answer was I heat my boat with latitude <laughs> I think that's about what Aladino's ideal is, too. Once we were tied up to the somewhat sketchy, rusty wall, our main priority turned to winterizing the boat. However, we also wanted to give you a little tour of the boatyard where we currently are. It's quite a unique place with a lot of very interesting boats. So we're gonna go for a little boatyard tour with a beer in hand after a long day working in the sun. And we're going to take you along with us and show you some boats that we find interesting. And I think Aladino will point out some interesting features and design ideas as we go. Here's the first one. This one is one <laughs> of the best designed beers. We are not sponsored by Lef. However, if Lef wanted to sponsor us, we I, would be all on board for that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I would make great publicity. It's super good. Yeah. Yeah. You see the problem with boats, it always compromises. Um, you get this, you lack that. You get this, you don't get that. It's always a compromise. So, with Lef instead, <laughs> there is no compromise. Lef, the best. <laughs> you get all, all you want in a beer. Okay, Lef has really got to pay us for this episode now. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the covered component of the boatyard. It's a pretty big, just barn sort of thing. And it's fairly empty considering. It costs about 50% more to leave your boat in the covered area versus the huge sprawling outdoor area outside. And that 50% is enough that most people don't do it unless they're working on building a boat or something like that. So there's actually a boat in this big plastic enclosure. And Aladino, do you want to tell us quickly why you would have a boat in a big plastic tent? Well, I assume that guy is Swiss. <laughs> no, um, I just assume he is doing a paint job or something similar and then uh, dust is your biggest enemy. Well, and by the paint job, then you'd be worried about the sanding component of that. Well, after sanding. After you've sanded, you want no dust oh, in your I closed see. tent. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, look at the floor here, You're just by walking you get so much dust in the air and that all ends up in your paint. Mm -hmm. So that is one, could be one reason why. Yeah, there's all sorts of boats that are very in need of love, let's say, in this boatyard. There's some boats which are in excellent condition and their owners uh, take really good care of them and then there's a lot that need a bit of work as well. Yeah, from all the boats I see here it's uh, more about functionality, um, trying things, new things. Uh, There's a lot of one-off boats here yeah. that are really unique. Not, of, not only one-off boats, but one-off projects and all kinds of thoughts you can have, like installing a 200 horsepower outboard in a sailboat, like how can I make that happen? Um, how could I connect two monohull sailboats and make it a catamaran? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, for see, for real. no kidding. <laughs> so it's more about projects like that, like it is the place of absolute freedom and yeah, I am. I have mixed feelings about that because uh, with sailboats there is not one way how to do things but 
I still think there is limits. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you can uh, widen your horizon here. Mm -hmm. That's it is for sure. pretty cool. Yeah. There are so many boats here. Um, I love this. Above the waterline it has more of classical lines, um, except the bow. The very... And you call that a plumb bow yeah, when the, it's straight up and down. The, clump, the plumb bow and the bowsprit that is uh, different, that's more modern. But the stern is very classic and the cabin top is classic. And instead on the underwater they put a deep bulb keel uh, on it and a very long rudder which is good for speed right which is good for speed yeah you have way less um surface a smaller surface area and you put the weight uh lower down and collect even more having a bulb keel so you can uh, give it more rig it has a very tall rig most of those boats if you go in this direction you even build them out of carbon fiber not sure about this one but it could be the few designs that i know they are cool nice thing to see so here is one of those uh, project things um, first i thought it is keel uh, cooling for the engine so there is a system where you have lots of tubes um, which are to cool your engine but as I have seen them, there is normally more tubes. It's about the quantity uh, enough to cool, so you have more. So yeah, we're also asking you guys. Uh, that was one of my guesses first. And the second guess was since everybody works on their projects, it might have been an idea of having a rail to hold on to in case the boat capsizes. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know what else it would be for. Oh, yeah, there is a cute one. Small little long keel. Or, um, that could even be wooden. Cabin for sure is. All kinds of boats. That aluminum hole looks very interesting to me. Well, it's just a hole but it is aluminum and it does have a very nice shape but I think it would be too much work as a new project I have no idea of the rest of the boat it seems empty, there's no cabin or anything yeah like this is one I really like and there is the cutest go anywhere boat In the next episode, we'll show you how we prepared our boat for winter ashore. I'd also like to take this moment to thank our patrons. It's funny because it was the end of September when we pulled Magic Carpet out of the water. Yes, I know, the videos are quite backlogged. At the time we were pulling her out of the water, we had only just opened our patron account two days ago, and we had just gotten our first 25 patrons. I was over the moon happy about that. Now our patron account has been steadily growing to a point where we can at least pay for our groceries every month. That's a huge victory. So the $2 or more per month that you guys, our kind patrons, donate to us is truly changing our lives, and beyond just that, the ability to meet you guys guys and talk to you all has also changed our lives in an extraordinarily profound way. Uh, we're pretty lucky to have the followers that we do. So from the bottom of our hearts, I just want to say thank you and until next time. Quiet voices in the night is running out of sight A lonely wind is passing by